All right, so there wasn't a ton of big AI news this week, but there were definitely some stories we have to cover. The first being that OpenAI just dropped GBT 5.1, which apparently comes with a pretty major personality upgrade. SoftBank also sold its entire stake in NVIDIA, in a move that shocked pretty much everyone. And Feifei Li's World Labs introduced their first ever product, a world model called Marble. Let's get into it. All right, so as Sam Altman tweeted out, GBT 5.1 is out. It's a nice upgrade. He particularly likes the improvements in instruction following and the adaptive thinking, which is something we'll touch on more in a bit. Going over to their official release post, they write, GBT 5.1, a smarter, more conversational ChatGPT. We're upgrading GBT 5 while making it easier to customize ChatGPT, starting to roll out today to everyone, beginning with paid users. So this release comes with two models, GBT 5.1 Instant, now warmer, more intelligent, and better at following your instructions, and GBT 5.1 Thinking, their advanced reasoning model, now easier to understand, faster on simpler tasks, and more persistent on complex ones. So I actually think that this is a great update. When we went from GBT 4.0 to GBT 5, the model lost a lot of personality, and a lot of people were mad about that. But now they've dialed back the dryness, I guess you could say, and the model is warmer by default and more conversational. At the same time, they improved instruction following and made it easier to fine-tune your ChatGPT's personality and tone. So if you prefer a more analytical, no-fluff assistant, you can just switch it. As you can see from this example, the default model now more closely resembles something like GBT 4.0. Not as sycophantic, but just warmer and more conversational. Here's an example of the instruction following improvements. When you ask it to always respond with six words, you can see it sticks to that much more consistently over long context compared to GBT 5. And in fact, as they write here, for the first time, GBT 5.1 Instant can use adaptive reasoning to decide when to think before responding to more challenging questions, resulting in more thorough and accurate answers while still responding quickly. So perhaps this adaptive reasoning is what allows it to be much better at following instructions accurately over time, which is obviously extremely useful for math and coding, where there are many steps and a ton of data to process. So yeah, that's the GBT 5.1 upgrade. Warmer, better at following instructions, and more customizable. A big step towards personalized AI. And speaking of making things your own, today's sponsor, Poyo.ai, is basically a one-stop shop for AI video creation. I've been playing around with their text-to-video generation, where you can choose from a whole list of leading AI models, like VO 3.1, Sora 2, and more. But honestly, their homegrown Poyo 2.0 model, which just dropped this week, has actually been giving me the best outputs. I mean, just look at these generations. They even come with automatic background music and sound effects that match the scene. And you can guide it on what sounds you want. Like here, where I asked for an ominous police drone surveilling the city. There's also image to video generation, again with most of the top models, plus Poyo's new ultra-fast, high-quality 2.0 model. As you can see, I used it to bring my channel's profile picture to life. Pretty creepy. And the cool thing is, you can actually use these generations or images to create consistent characters across different scenes. So I could take my original profile picture and the creepier version I just made and put them both into a completely different scene together. And finally, they also just released a new AI Extend feature, which you can find in the AI Tools folder that lets you extend videos. Here, I added a cat into a scene with a dog building a sandcastle. So definitely check out Poyo.ai. The link will be in the description. They're actually running a deal right now where you can get 50% off credits for one week for their new Poyo 2.0 model. So don't sleep on that. And thanks again to Poyo.ai for sponsoring this video. All right, now back to the video. Here's something I'm sure surprised pretty much everyone this week. SoftBank dumped its entire NVIDIA portfolio worth $5.8 billion and went all in on OpenAI to the tune of 30 billion. So definitely an interesting move by SoftBank CEO, Masayoshi-san, especially with all the talk of a potential AI bubble right now. And about that actually, 
You guys know how everyone's been talking about Michael Burry shorting NVIDIA and Palantir? Well, funny enough, he actually just closed down his hedge fund, basically admitting he doesn't understand the market right now. He wrote in a letter to investors, With a heavy heart, I will liquidate the funds and return capital by year's end. My estimation of value in securities is not now and has not been for some time in sync with the markets. So I don't really know what to make of this. He seemed very confident in his decision to short AI. And ironically, the AI sector has been getting hit hard these last few days. Yet he's now no longer in the game. So I just don't really get it. Anyways, moving on, we also got a pretty major update on the infrastructure side this week. This time from Anthropic. For the first time, Anthropic is building its own AI infrastructure. They're constructing data centers in Texas and New York that will create thousands of American jobs, and the total investment comes out to around $50 billion. So at this point, I think pretty much every major AI player has or is working on their own data centers, which is actually wild if you think about it. These companies started as research labs, and now they're building out gigawatt-scale compute facilities, like their energy companies. Anthropic says this is all about staying at the frontier. Basically, if you want to build Claude-level models, you can't really rely on someone else's infrastructure anymore. You need your own compute, tuned for your own workloads. And speaking of data centers, Microsoft just unveiled their second Fairwater AI data center, located in Atlanta. As they write, each site is connected via a dedicated AI network, creating an AI super factory that enables real-time collaboration across states to train the next generation of AI models. So people don't often talk about Microsoft in the AI race because they don't really have a frontier model of their own. But keep in mind, they're still heavily invested in OpenAI. They have Copilot, and they're quietly building out a massive amount of infrastructure behind the scenes. And actually, Satya Nadella, their CEO, had a really interesting comment about all of this. In a recent interview with Dwarkesh Patel and Dylan Patel, he basically laid out two possible futures for Microsoft. And one of them is that the company becomes purely an infrastructure provider, basically provisioning compute to fully autonomous AI agents. Check this out. But is it, is it something, maybe just, just to make sure we're talking about the same thing, um, is it a thing that a human, like me using Excel as a podcaster, no, 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 I'm not no, proficient no. in Excel, but like... Take, uh, completely autonomous. So just imagine I work, like, so we should now maybe sort of lay out how I think the future of the yeah. company is, right? Uh, the future of the company would be the tools business, which I have a computer, yeah. I use Excel, and in fact, in the future, I'll even have a co-pilot, right. uh, and that co-pilot will also have agents, right? That's still, I am, I, you know, it's still me steering everything, yeah. and everything is coming back. So that's kind of one world. Yeah. Then the second world is, the company just literally provisions a computing resource for an AI agent, yeah. and that is working fully autonomously. Yeah. That fully autonomous agent will have essentially embodied set of those same tools right. uh, that are available to it, right? So this AI tool that comes in also has not just a raw computer, uh, because it's gonna be more token efficient to use tools to get stuff done. In fact, I kind of look at it and say, our business, which today is an end user tools business, will become essentially an infrastructure business in support of agents doing work. Is there another way to think about it? So yeah, that's a pretty interesting perspective. And maybe this is part of the reason why all these AI companies are building their own data centers now. It would certainly make sense. Now, moving on, we have Feifei Li's company, World Labs, introducing their first ever product called Marble. Marble is essentially a 3D world generator. It lets you create, edit, and share high fidelity, persistent 3D worlds from simple text prompts. You can think of it kind of like a text-to-video generator, except instead of generating a video, you're generating an entire immersive 3D world. And when you think about this paired with VR or AR, it could be a complete game changer for entertainment, learning, training, pretty much everything. But beyond that, world models like this are also incredibly useful as training simulators for robots, especially when they're as realistic and high fidelity as Marble appears to be. So I'm definitely going to be playing around with this model. It honestly looks just as good as Google's Genie 3, which isn't even available to the public yet. 
So the fact that we can actually use marble right now is pretty impressive. And finally, to wrap up this week's AI recap, I just wanted to briefly mention that AI hit yet another pretty wild milestone. An entirely AI-generated country song just hit number one on the Billboard Country Digital Song Sales chart. So this is actually pretty insane. I mean, this isn't a niche AI music leaderboard or some random TikTok ranking. This is a Billboard chart, and it's the first time an AI-generated track has ever taken the top spot. We're literally watching AI music take over in real time. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the recap, please make sure to drop a like. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. And as always, I'll be catching you guys in the next one.